Well, thank you all for coming this morning, and uh, thank you to the superintendents. We want to make sure that the that the Laredoans understand what's going on with COVID in our schools and our community. And um, you know, we 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 had this uh, a week ago exactly, uh, and it was the beginning of uh, the school year, the, the uh, spring semester. Uh, we're here a week later, and I wanted to make sure that the, the two school districts had a chance to update everybody and what's going on, and, and that we at the state level uh, can tell you what we're doing. Uh, I work very closely as a team here in Laredo uh, with uh, our state senator, Judith Safarini, our other state representative, Tracy King, and I've spoken with both of them. And what we're going to do is continue to do our part. We understand that the school boards and the, in particular the school, the superintendents, the two superintendents have a very hard job, but they love what they do and they're good at it. And uh, we trust their judgment, I certainly do. And, and we're gonna back them up, we're gonna back up Laredo. What happens is the state of Texas provides funding to the school districts in the, here in Laredo as, they do, as we do across the state. And it's based on the number of students that go to school every day. So they take attendance, and that's, that's how we determine how much uh, funding you'll get from the state of Texas. The, the, our two superintendents are gonna update you in a minute on the decision the two school boards made yesterday to, um, to go to virtual learning uh, starting Monday. Starting Monday. And what we're gonna do at the state level is uh, continue to uh, appeal to the governor. Because right now the governor is the one that's gonna make the decision. It's, it's not even the commissioner of education, it's the governor appeal to the governor to continue to fund us as long as we're doing virtual learning uh, here in Laredo and in other parts of the state. Uh, we see the rise of COVID. All the indications are that it's a rise, it'll go up, but it'll go back down, we hope, about a month from now, maybe even sooner. Uh, but in the meantime, we've got to keep teaching our kids. That's the bottom line. We've got to teach our kids, but we've got to do it safely. And so what the school boards yes voted yesterday was to move to virtual based on the recommendation of our two superintendents. And what we're gonna do at the state level is make sure we get the funding to Laredo so we don't get penalized for a pandemic that we had nothing to do with. That's the bottom line. We, don't, we should not be penalizing the people of Laredo or any parts of the state or any school, any public school, or any student because there's a pandemic going on. We're all doing the best we can. We're wearing our masks. I'm gonna put it back on when I finish here. Uh, many of us have taken the vaccine and more and more people, I think, understand the way to approach daily life again to try to kill uh, Omicron. We got past COVID, we got past Delta, we're going to get past Omicron, but we got to do it responsibly. So I just want to assure our superintendents and our school board members, Mr. Van Hemp, uh, uh, Rodriguez, sorry, he had that over the mask, he threw me off with the mask. Ricky, thank you for being here. We want to assure you that we're going to get that funding. We're going to get that funding if, it, if it's the last thing that we do. And I, in the end, will say that if the governor won't do it, he has to call us into special session in Austin. Only the governor can call the legislature into a special session right now. If he does, I have no doubt that we will pass a bill necessary to make sure, number one, that we get the funding to Laredo and all our schools across the state of Texas, and also that we don't penalize our schools uh, when, when we're doing assessments on testing and so forth because of the impact the, the uh, pandemic had. So with that, I'd like to call uh, Dr. Silvia Rios, LISD, to talk about uh, what they did yesterday and how we're going to move forward. And I think we're going to look at this on a weekly basis, by the way. Doctor, you can comment on that, but I think that we're basically got to assess about every week to see where we are. You know, when I, uh, when I first got into the legislature, this phrase was talked about a lot. It's called local control, local control. And I have always supported that, that idea, that concept, that we should allow our local communities, our, our school boards, to run the schools. Of course, we've got to give them some parameters. I understand that. But the fact is, we're such a big state, 254 counties, over 1,000 school districts. And it's different here than it is in Amarillo or you know, in Paso or Dallas, things are different. We have to count on our local school boards. We elect them to do their job. They name our superintendents to do their job. We at the legislature work with them. That's what we should do. But let me say this, six months ago, I voted and we passed full funding for our school districts. The money is there. We approved it already. 
And we're going to remind the governor. We're going to remind the lieutenant governor. We're going to remind the commissioner of education. We already approved the money. We are in an, in an unprecedented time with this pandemic, but we are working through it, and we'll get on the other. We'll get to the other side of it, and we'll be better for it because we'll have been more resourceful. But we'll have been more creative about educating. These two superintendents continue every day to figure out how can we get this done, given the hurdles that are put in, in, in front of us. So we, as a community, are being creative. That's what you're seeing here today. We're never forgetting that number one is we've got to teach our kids, but we've got to keep them safe. But we approve that money, and I'm going to remind them, and a governor should understand this. Governor Abbott had COVID. You may not remember that. He already had COVID at least once, maybe twice, I'm not sure. And, and for those of you who don't know, very recently the lieutenant governor got COVID. So they should be sympathetic to what's going on here, all right? They should understand that our, our school boards and our superintendents have to work past this and they're doing it the best they can and we should not penalize them as state legislators. I would say this to my colleagues, if you want to penalize them, you know, why don't you go teach for a while? Why don't you go sit to that classroom? When I was in college, I was a substitute teacher, elementary, junior high, and high school. My mother taught for 35 years. I know how hard and how demanding teaching is, but I know how important it is as well. So I will tell you, the money is there. Senator Safarini, Representative King and I, and a lot of other legislators around the state are gonna make sure that we are not penalized for being resourceful, for being creative, for doing everything we have, we have to do here in Laredo to make sure our kids are safe, but that they're getting educated. So thank you very much. Uh, I, it's, it's my prayer that we will get past this, and I know we will. Uh, every indication, I've worked very closely with the Commissioner of Health, with the Division of Emergency Management. I know what, what's supposed to happen. What's supposed to happen is about a month from now, this should be in our rearview mirror. But we got to take it a day at a time, a week at a time, whatever the superintendents think is best. We are here to support them. And as a community, I'll say this. We in this community, in this country, when you look at our history, have been through tougher times. Those who came before us, generations, and some that we call the, great, the greatest generation, have been through tougher times. We're going to get through this, and we're going to be better off for it. We'll be more resourceful. We'll, we'll be more creative, and our kids will learn. So thank you all very much for your leadership. We fully support you, and let's just keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you very much.